Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Brittany and I'm on a mission to hit 2,000 subscribers, so make sure you click that button below. I would appreciate it. So if you guys remember, I just posted a video of me actually working on a hat and I'm glad I ended up leaving everything as is, which is like on my machine because that's a hefty process to set up. And weirdly enough, I just had somebody reach out to me to embroider on a single hat. And I was like, all right, I'll just go ahead, you know, pump it out. Now the thing is, is that this person did reach out to me once before. We are doing like the same name. I guess he's in the process of potentially trying to make it like an apparel line. So he's just kind of testing the waters, wearing it around for himself. Now I will go ahead and throw up the original image that I did do. However, this one is going to be a little bit different because he's doing like a 3D effect. And as you guys know, with my double threading, I'm not the largest of fans, but do keep in mind this is going to be about four inches long in size. So it's way bigger than the other video that I did go ahead and post about. So I'll go ahead and link it here. Um, it's actually done pretty well that video that I posted about and a lot of people were mentioning maybe my bob intention needed to be corrected due to maybe the thread size, things like that. And I still have to and still really want to run that specific video. I just haven't had time since you guys do know my embroidery machine is at my parents' house. So typically when I do come here, it's just to kind of work on orders. So um, I've been getting a lot of like one-offs and one thing that I've really been like contemplating in my mind is I, I've been seeing people ask me a lot about pricing and what I'm charging. I kind of want to dive a little bit into that possibly in this video. Um, it's just kind of a weird subject to be honest with you because I don't really supply the materials. I just supply you know, the machine, the embroidery part of things. So I feel like my pricing can be a little bit maybe lower than the average bear because I typically do have everyone provide me their items. But I'm realizing more and more that because I have to go from my house, meet them, come back home, then go to my parents, come back home and then meet them back out. I'm doing a lot, as you can see, a lot of running around and these one-offs really aren't panning out like they were when the machine was physically at my house because I would typically meet them go home work on the project meet them and go back right so now I'm trying to change my schedule to where I'm actually embroidering a bulk amount of items in one day or I'm trying to change it to where I'm embroidering maybe every Monday for example which is actually today it happens to be a holiday so I'm off, um, but I really only have two projects at the moment, but then I have two other people reaching out to me to wanting me to do one offs. So it's like, you know, I, I'm just, I'm really struggling with trying to balance all this and trying to figure out a schedule that best works for me. Um, as you guys don't know, and I'm curious if you'd even be interested, but I am in the process of building a house and a lot of my time has been taken up from that. And I've been filming it all, like all of it. I've been filming all of it. But I'm more of a crafting channel, so I'm not really sure if you guys actually wanna see that. Again, I would just kind of sprinkle them in. It would not take over what I'm doing here. It's just more just bringing you into my life and what we're doing. Um, Cause as you guys do remember, we sold our house back in September at this point. We are towards the creeping in towards the end of February now. So there's just been a lot of things that we did, we were going to do, we've changed, we've adjusted. And so yeah, there's just been kind of a lot going on there. I'm ranting a lot and I apologize, we will get into it. So let's go ahead, dive into the project and then talk a little bit about cost and the adjustments that I need to make along the way. So you guys might not be able to see what I'm exactly doing, I do apologize. It's just the angle in which we're working with. However, today, like I mentioned, we are working on a hat. This is the particular hat that I will be embroidering on. These are pretty simple hats just because the fronts are more foamy and they don't have the center line. So I kind of do like those, even though they are not the most popular hats. The popular one, to be honest, is the Richardson's. Um, this is more of a trucker style. So basically, let's talk about price, right? The, the problem is, is that I... I don't digitize. I have no desire to digitize. I don't do this full time. This is my part time fun thing, right? So as you guys know, I do work with a digitizer and he does all my stuff for me. 
Now, the thing is, is that when it comes to physical costs, right, I make the client pay for that. I'm not paying for that. You want your item digitized. You want a specific logo, a specific whatever. Um, originally, when I stated it before, I actually mentioned that I did not add on like additional cost to get that item digitized. However, I have realized that I, ha I have to. I have to add on a small a fee to have those items digitized. And that's specifically because I'm the one that has to get the logo, then convert it over, you know, to your computer. Then I gotta go to my digitizer, upload it, you know, go back and forth with corrections, things like that. Now, when I do say I'm, I am charging a fee to do that, I'll be dead honest with you guys. If my digitizer charges me $10 to have something done, I'll charge the client 15 and I'm making an additional $5 on that digitizing product, right? So that's ideal. The one thing that I have noticed also is that when it does come to digitizing, you have to be very mindful when it comes to thread count. I, I do know that um, some people, especially in my comment section, will say, you know, I'll charge a job based off of how many thread count it has. And I definitely can see why, because the thing is, is that obviously you're using more thread, you're using more bobbin, it's gonna take more of your time. So that definitely is something to consider. Another thing that I've actually was a learning lesson for me personally was I was giving out prices before I was even seeing said logo, right? And did I have that smack me in the face um, at least like that I can really remember is like three times. And um, that would have been the one that I, I'm talking about, which is where I felt like the client was wrong who had me do the double layer. Um, I priced them out on it, not realizing that we were gonna have a double layer, which is again, more thread, more bobbin, more everything. Um, so I definitely did undercharge them on that one. And before I even did the job, I had to go back and correct it once I did see the logo. So that was one situation. Another situation was um, another image that I did, which was, I think I labeled it something like my my largest project. Um, that one, I, I totally quote it inaccurate. I did not realize how much thread that project was going to be. I shouldn't say thread, but like, how many stitch stitch count it was going to be. So not only did I undercharge her to get the item digitized, I undercharged her to do the physical work, right? Because I'm going to make more money if I do thread with fabric because therefore you're not using as much versus in that particular one, all I did was straight up thread, right? Now granted it's easy because you can throw it on the machine, set all the colors and like walk away, right? Just walk away, let it do its thing versus with fabric, you have to sit there, you have to do each individual color, you have to cut it all around. So everything kind of does have a point of price. Do keep into consideration, obviously, the size that the client is going to want, because obviously, a four inch, you know, project is going to be way cheaper than someone who's like, Oh, well, I want it, you know, like, like my big hoop, my eight or my, my one hoop, which is like an eight by nine. If it's going to be that size, you're going to be charged more for that because again, it's more in depth. Another thing we do need to consider is when it comes to specific items that the client is wanting digitized, for example, exactly like I'm doing right here is a hat, right? I'm not going to run a sample on the client's hat. Like there's just no way. So I have to personally keep hats in stock and make sure that I am running them as a hat, you know, sample, right? So therefore, hats aren't cheap. This one in particular is $4.97. I picked them up at Walmart. Now, granted, I did have like $2 hats that I did pick up from my supplier. I've since run out of those and I just really haven't picked them back up. I need to put the, the image on the USB. I didn't even do that, hold on. Now we're back. So like I was mentioning, basically when it comes to physical hats and needing those um, embroidered, I have to run a sample. Now, as I've mentioned before, I typically will run like a logo on one of my 
um, like cutaway backings. I've even suggested doing it on like a bed sheet. I really did like when I did that because then at the end, like I could see all the different logos that I did work up. Um, and then I just threw the bed sheet out, you know, things like that. But right now I don't, I just don't do that because I haven't picked up a bed sheet. And, um, so yeah, so like that is fine, right? Cause I can easily run it on a bed sheet. I can easily run it on like a cutaway backing, but again, I'm working on a hat. So not only do I have to do it on the hat, but now I got to supply a hat to run the sample. So I'm really curious. What do you guys do when it comes to a hat sample? Obviously you have to run it as said hat, right? So I have to put that into consideration when it comes to charging the cost. At this point, we have the cost of the digitizing, which you can do it if you want, or you can subsidize it out. It's up to you what you wanna do. Now you gotta think of the cost in what am I embroidering on, right? Am I embroidering on a hat, a sweater, a jacket? Am I uh, embroidering on a bag? Like what am I embroidering on, right? So that's another thing you have to put into consideration of your overall cost, because the thing is, is that each project that you work on could require different backing they're going to require different um needles so they're going to require different thread sizes and you you have to be able to have said all those items so when you are accepting a job you have them in hand and then all you're doing is just pumping those projects out so i'm not gonna lie embroidery is expensive any hobby you get into is expensive Right, so there's just a lot of things that I've purchased, I've I have on my wish list, things that I I still want to purchase. You know, I'm kind of repeating myself, but you get my point. There's a lot of times where I have to buy these um, scissors, which are like those curved scissors. I pick them up from um, Joann's, and I pick them up from Amazon. I'm always going to pick them up when they're on sale or if there's a deal going on. I have like three sets of these, and these alone are like, you know, let's say technically they're like 20 bucks but i typically buy them anywhere between 10 to 13 because i either buy them on sale or use a coupon something like that and i always have to have those in stock my bobbin in stock you know your thread so the thing is is that you have to think all right so i'm gonna make said hat right it depends on this hat do i need to put a backing on it do you know do i have to use a special needle um needle for it? a special you know thread weight things like that now, of course, a lot of the times you are going to be using your standard 75 needle. You're going to use your seven, your, um, is this, I think this is 40. Yeah. 40, your 40 weight thread. So those are going to be very common. You also have to make sure that you have the color options available to those customers. I do have a full video with, um, going over like where I purchased all my thread from, which is candle thread USA. I always have them linked down below. I have zero affiliate with them. I just truly like them. They're very affordable. Honestly, I always spend a minimum of $100 when I go there. And then I believe I get free shipping if I'm not mistaken. I placed like three orders with them in total. My last order I placed with them was like probably one of my largest orders. And if you guys don't remember, I had a beautiful thread wall and that baby will be coming back one day. Um, but until now, we are working out of a box because we're working out of a garage. Anyways, I'm digressing. I'm, I'm rambling a little too much. All right, so that project is embroidering. So I just kind of wanted to come out here just so where it's a little bit more quiet, kind of continue my little rant when it comes to physical pricing. So like I mentioned, we got all of our things. We got to look at, you know, is the client supplying that material? Are you providing that? You know, obviously, like I mentioned, if, I, if the client is providing it, I do prefer that, right? Because in my mind, you're getting the exact color, the size, the fabric, everything that you want. All I'm doing is putting the design on it for you. I personally like that and not only that I don't have to put money out front in order to keep all those supplies on hand now in a perfect world I would have a website and people were placing orders and I was you know just embroidering on the projects or the products that I was supplying that would be a perfect world but in my situation that is not something that I'm actually able to do so I just have the clients provide me those products that they want embroidered on right so of course I do take that off my overall cost. Now, again, I've seen it in comments. I typically charge, right, a minimum of $15. Like minimum is $15 is my starting point. I have seen people where they'll say my minimum starting is $20. So it really just depends on what you're doing. Now here's the thing, right? And I'm gonna be just dead honest with you guys. 
I did adjust my price from a minimum of 15 to a minimum of 20 and I saw like a, a decline with my profit. Like nobody was really wanting to work with me because in their mind they're like, all right, I'm spending 20 bucks for a minimum. Plus I had to pay for the logo, which again is anywhere between 15 to $20, depending on the size of the logo, the image, things like that, that they're wanting done. Um, if a client is wanting like a custom birthday t-shirt, it depends. Like the, the last one that I did with that little plane and the clouds, I had to buy the plane and then I had to buy the clouds. So I had to buy two different images and then merge it all together. Now granted, I already had those numbers because I used to work on the Sonic t-shirt. So of course that benefited me. Now, if I was to run that particular image over and over and over, at least if I ran that image at least two more times, at that point, the shirt would now be straight up profit for me. Technically, the first shirt would be straight up profit and then like second and third would just, or what am I trying to say? The first shirt would pay for the the like material that you had to buy which is like the fabric it would have paid for you know me purchasing the digitizing images things like that and then the second and third shirt would have just been pure profit that's what i'm trying to say so um that's the thing with the one-offs because that's as you guys see that's kind of what i do so i'm not really benefiting that much with my one-offs um but yeah i, I really got to change my strategy when it comes to embroidering coming up with my price points i can't constantly be meeting clients and going to my parents and then meeting them back out and then meeting another client and then coming back to my parents and going back out like i'm not joking if i kept coming to my parents house almost every single day monday through friday and doing like one-off projects and i'm just like i'm getting burnt out just between my machine beeped hold on my bobbin ran out and you guys know how much i love that mid hat project so yeah, so I, again, I'm being, I am trying not to be as vague as, as others I see when I post or when they post about, you know, costs and, and embroidery and what they should be charging. I am trying to just be honest with my cost. Like I mentioned, um, I did see quite a bit of a decline when I started doing a minimum of $20. So of course, you know, like me mentally, I was just like freaking out. And so I just, you know, brought it back down to 15. I noticed that, you know, things started going back up. Um, I'm in the process right now where I'm trying to just embroider on Mondays. So my goal like mentally is that I'm collecting projects from clients maybe throughout like let's say the week and then on Monday like last Monday I was at my parents from right after work until like 10 o'clock at night and I was here for over five hours just like boom 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 like snapping out all my projects right and now again I went and I met people I met two this week and I'm here Monday and I'm trying to boom boom you know meet up and then this afternoon I have two other people who want to meet up with me. So I'm like trying to do it to where I can go next Monday. But when they reach out to me on Monday and I tell them next Monday, they don't like that. So in that situation, that's when you need to charge like a rush order fee. That is not something I was doing at all, like at all. And I was talking with my niece and my niece goes, the company that I work for, which, um, I don't want to get into it, but the company that she works for, if they require the product within three days, they charge a minimum of 20 bucks right so i thought to myself well that would like that makes sense like why aren't i doing that right so it's now to the point to where like if a client is going to reach out to me and they're not going to fit within my like monday schedule and they want it sooner then i'm going to say hey that's a rush request it's going to be an additional you know 10 20 30 whatever you guys want to charge you can do it because again you have to stop what you're doing either jump that order ahead of other things or you have to adjust your schedule and the way your life is going so yeah so that's kind of where we're at with the breakdown of cost um i just i have to figure out something either one i need to stick to a monday schedule or two i need to just increase my price and just keep doing the back and forth running around um, which is not ideal because like i mentioned i am in the process of building a house so a lot of my afternoons are being taken up by running up to the house because it's not close by to do what we need to to then you know obviously come back and then i'm you know i have a life i have a life outside of embroidery as we all do so hopefully that video was a little helpful for you i believe it's quite long because yeah i've, I've done some pretty lengthy clips i'm going to try to cut it down so i do apologize again i'm just trying to be as raw and honest as possible with you guys 
with the cost and what I'm doing. Like I said, my minimum is $15 out the door and that's just me putting a name on a bag, like a name on a bag, because I'm using the fonts that I already have. Now, if you're going to ask for a specific font and I don't have it, then I'm increasing it. If you're gonna ask for a logo, I'm gonna charge you for that. If you're gonna ask for a rush request, I need to start charging you for that. So those are all the little things and where you need to come up with your cost, your breakdown. You also need to come up with, again, are you providing the material? Are they providing the material? If you mess up on said material, you have to be able to replace it. So that's another thing, depending on what you're embroidering on. I will charge more for that. So like on a t-shirt, I might not charge as much as I do on like a backpack, right? Because if I mess up on that backpack, I have to pay for that. And I need to be able to pay for that backpack with the cost that I'm charging you so then I'm not dipping into my own pocket. So hopefully that does make some sense. If not, leave your suggestions, comments, concerns down below. Maybe we can dress it in another video and we'll just go from there. So hopefully you guys did enjoy it. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe and we'll see you in the next crafting project. Bye everyone. I like to show you guys a hat that I've completed while we were chit chatting. This is the hat right here. It actually came out really well. It was that double line. It looks like it has the gold underneath with tan on top. As you guys can see, just ever so slightly peeking through. So yeah, that was what I was working on while we were chatting.